Hello, welcome to episode 112 of Checkpoint Chat. My name is Alessandro Barbosa. I'm joined by the sentient Afro himself, Matthew Figueroa. In the flesh. In, in the, the hair. hair. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've come to earth to tell you guys that there's nothing out there. It's just, oh, is there it's nothing? just hair. <laughs> it's just hair. It's, yeah. You're saying the rest of the galaxy is just like, imagine like a whole planet, which is just hair. That's where I'm from. Like cousin it, <laughs> my, but a planet. My people come in peace. Now nah, I'm speaking shit. Yo, I'm tired. It's a weekend. Even had, me. Had the week off this week. I somehow feel more exhausted than far into oh, the week. Oh, right. You had the week off. How was it? It was good. I spent, spent many a late nights playing playing some games, which is great. Mm-hmm. It's Get always a good relaxing time. time. And as always, you blink and the week's over and it's work on Monday and I'm sad. I had some sads. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Leave just comes and goes and it disappears super quickly. Especially mm. since you're like... At home, I feel like yeah, it, was it goes a even proper faster. Staycation. Yeah. yeah, but it, it's cool that you, you it, Lenska was on leave as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool that you guys took leave together then. Yeah, because I think Just like time off. it's even though you you're staying at home, like you are definitely still getting some rest, some well deserved mm. rest. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean it was. I didn't have to worry about work or anything. I was just living my best life. Living your best life, yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, no I mean, sounds, and, and like given great. given the circumstances, it's. I mean, when else am I ever going to have an actual staycation? Exactly. I mean, in in general, you you on vacation, you want to like go away, or you know, and going. I find going away is fun, but it, there is an element of like stress to it. Oh yeah, I mean, and depending what you do, you. Sometimes you're not actually relaxing. Mm, mm. It's like if you go on a trip somewhere, it's, yeah, if you, like I know when we travel, we often, like we'll say, visit a European city and we'll walk that thing broken. Because we'll you feel like, like you was, have to, like you, you're there, so you're like, well, we have to make the most of it mm. while we're here, you know? Exactly. Yeah. We've got three I, days. We're going to see everything in three days. I know when I, I usually go to Cape Town for like a week, um, for holiday like i love it and i love going to the beach and stuff but there's like days when i'm there where i'm like man i could just do with the day of just sitting at home and playing video games and i can't do that <laughs> there you know so but why you so the having switch. the excuse well i have the switch but like you know you look outside and there's this beautiful sun and you're like well i can't waste this day you know and then you take your switch to the beach oh fuck hey, no. I, I, I climbed lion's head with my switch and I would <laughs> do that. The the beach though, it's all sandy and I know. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, you're gonna get you're gonna get sand in your little little fan grooves. Oh good lord no. Uh, uh-uh. my, my my OG switch is already so loud. It, it's that mm. thing's crying. It depends it depends yeah. on the depends on the games I'm playing, but I I do notice that sometimes I'm like, oh, I can actually hear the fan off this thing. No, but my, you know, like if a computer gets old and the mm. fan's loose or something, but it's weird because mm. it, it'll start like that. It's that meh, and then eventually just goes away. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Please Electronics, stay like they're not built. I know. They, they, they so temperamental. I wonder if there's a way to replace that fan. I'm almost sure there is. Um, probably. Like, but like I fix it, doesn't, it probably doesn't has a kit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember someone... on, on my old MacBook, I, I actually used that website. I fixed it. I was just like, this fan is so loud, whatever. And they sold the exact fan that fits in there and they had the instructions and I replaced the fan on that MacBook. It was a good time. Uh, I think the wildest thing I've tried to DIY is, I think it was an iPhone 5S. My screen cracked. <gasps> I changed the screen all by myself. And that you know is what? wild. You know what happened? The, the replacement screen I got did not work. Oh no! <laughs> so I thought I had fucked my phone. So I spent... A long time, because have you ever seen how they take, oh, I don't know how the new iPhones work, but back in the day, uh, the, on the 5S, you have to actually move, it's not like um, an iPhone has a back cover that you can remove, and then it clips off, you literally have to put a suction cup mm-hmm. on the front screen and pull it off. It's the and same it's very, still, yeah. Oh, is it still, and it's very stressful because you pull that screen up and it's like a little thin ribbon tape, um, ribbon cable, sorry. And you have to take like tweezers and unplug it because if you yank it off, you're going to break it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I did this painstakingly and I put 
so I'd ordered a very cheap replacement screen from, I don't remember what I ordered on, from like some knockoff sites. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm not paying whatever it was at the time to to change my screen. <laughs> so I'm going to do it myself. And then I put the replacement screen on, it did not work. I thought I'd broken my phone. And then I put on my old screen again, the cracked one, and it works. So I was like, okay, that's cool. I'm just going to take it in and get it replaced properly now. <laughs> so it's just that screen that was fucked. It was just, yeah. <gasps> so I did, I, I did it right because, I mean, I got the broken screen working again. But, oh, my God, that was my probably heart. the wildest thing. My heart yeah. would have stopped. Oh, hmm. my God. That is, yeah. I, it's not you a know, good time. <laughs> I, I've done, like, fans and little things like that, but I've never, I mean, I've seen the guides on how to replace like an iPhone screen and I'm always like, mm. nah, I'm good. No, no, no. I'm like, I care. <laughs> Not touching anything. Yeah, that I care stuff is, I don't know if it's new locally, but uh, Shani got a, a new iPhone uh, last week. She traded, it was actually a really good deal. She traded in her um, iPhone hmm, 7. Yeah, that's like three years mm-hmm. old now. And they gave yeah. her like 3,600 Rand for it, which was like, damn. Oh, yeah. So and bad. then and then she bought a iPhone SE like cash. Um, so basically, oh, the nice. trade-in value was like a third of the phone's cost because an SE mm. is like ten thousand rand. Yeah. And that and that she wanted that SE because like she hates Face ID. I also hate Face ID. It's the best. <laughs> oh, it's got the button. Yeah, it's 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 basically mm. the exact same design that she had, but like a better camera and a faster processor and a much mm. better battery. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. And then they gave her eye care when she bought it. So, like, she's covered for one screen breakage yeah, it's, and it's, stuff like it's that. Not, it's pretty it's cool. It's not new. I think it's been around in SA for... Because oh, I know my iPhone 8, I had eye care. Oh, is it? And it's such, it's such a grudge purchase. Yeah, because, I mean, so did she get it thrown in for Yeah. Her? So, if you buy uh, if you see. buy your phone at the iStore, like, I don't know if it's only if you buy it cash or something, but it gets, like, thrown in for free yeah that, that that must have been a special because you usually have to pay mm. over and above for that um like when i got my iphone 8 it's like cool come okay, getting a new contract got the iphone 8 i care was like one and a half grand let's say something like a real grudge purchase but i'm like ah it's so worth as it careful yeah. as i am with my phone i've i've broken some phone screens and you know what i don't think i've ever told you how i've got shits like lenska can attest to this i'm very careful i look after my phones I've broken two phone screens in the most absurd ways. So the first one, I was busy cooking something one evening. This is years ago now. <laughs> you dropped it in up, the pot. <laughs> no, no, no. I opened up a cupboard and a salt shaker landed on my phone. Oh, God. Like, what was the salt shaker made of? A, no, it was like, I suppose, a like a heavy plastic or glass. I can't remember. But like landed, it just fell out the cupboard, landed square in my phone. Wow. Okay. okay. That's just so super that. unlucky. That's yeah. just unlucky. Then the second time, like a few years later, I had my phone in my pocket and I walked and I just bumped the corner <clears> of a couch <throat> and pulled out my phone. Screen was cracked. I was like, it doesn't matter how careful you are. That screen is going to crack. It's all, it's all to do with <laughs> angles, man. I, I've seen I've seen a friend of mine like drop his phone on like carpeted floor, but because it hit at an what? obscure angle, it cracks the screen. Yeah. Phones, Twilight. man. I've <laughs> never actually, I've never cracked a... An iPhone screen, touch wood. <clears throat> oh God! And yeah, I mean, I've phones. I've been very lucky with in terms of like, you know, not not breaking them. I've had ones fail for electronic reasons, but not mm. not like breaking breaking. Um, but yeah, who knows? That should, it, like you said, it happens. So you can be so careful, uh, and it's just like the most random thing. Like mm. I've often. I've often walked into my room and thrown my phone on the bed and just missed my bed. And, I, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm, I'm you, ready like to pick up my phone and see this cracked screen and it's not. So, well, have yeah. you ever had it where you throw your phone on the bed and it just like bounces off? It just like, yeets well, off the bed, yeah. Just shit. <laughs> and, and you just watch it. It like hits a corner and you're like, oh God, it's going to bounce again. And it hits another corner and it just falls off and you're just like, fuck. I, I'd love to watch a documentary on people's reactions when that happens. <laughs> Yeah. Just an hour Watch. of people's faces. Yeah, it's people like walking like, da, da, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That'd be great. Talking about God, bouncing, uh, we talk about video games on this this here podcast. Wow. That is the most natural transition we've ever had. I know, what amazing. A, what a segue. Segway king here. Uh, Shit. You've been playing a platformer with lots of bouncing. Uh, it's like a pogo stick platformer thing oh shit we're getting straight into it okay cool. yeah talk about video games talk cool, about cool, cool. video games this checkpoint chats you know maddie's been playing a bullshit platformer 
<sighs> so I've been playing a game called Pogo Stuck, colon, Rage with Your Friends, because this game's got co-op. I don't know why I'd ever played co-op, but it, that's beside the point. So this game came to my attention through a friend of mine, Cello, who often sends questions. Is he to a the, friend the or is he like an arch nemesis? He's no longer a friend after recommending this game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we all know me. I enjoy a good platformer. Uh, I'm a lover of Celeste, of Mario Maker, all these good times that... Like, and you're pretty good at them. They, oh, I mean, look, it's trial and error. So it's, it's, it's all these games that had a certain part of my brain where I'll struggle for hours on end and I'll get it right that one time and I'm like oh yes like the, this, that was worth the effort <laughs> that okay. dopamine hit <laughs> that that dopamine hit so Cello saw this he's like you know what I know of this really difficult game I've seen like YouTubers or people play it whatever it's called Pogo Stuck um, yeah and why don't you give it a bash um, he knew what he was doing he was like sure, I'm gonna sorry. fuck with Matthew talking about that made me parched <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I dis- uh, like after months of just not trying it, I was like, I don't actually have anything to stream. Let me let me buy it off Steam. It's super cheap. I think mm-hmm. it's like 40, 50 rand maybe. Can't and put a price I, on your rage. You can't put a price on anger. That's true. Uh, for everything else is MasterCard. Dear um, God. But, <laughs> but the premise of the game is that you are just a random person literally bouncing on a pogo stick. And you're trying to climb, I don't know if it's a mountain, it's just like a weird mishmash of random items and locales, whatever. Um, but you're just trying to use your poker stick to navigate up, I suppose, this figurative mountain or whatever the hell it is. And it's really complicated. It's not a simple thing of you moving left and right, jumping high, jumping down, whatever. The only controls you have is that you can rotate your poker stick clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you have one button which will give you a higher jump. And that's the control scheme. Okay. But they add a bit of depth in the sense that if you do a full 360 rotation in the air, then you land, you boost higher. Oh, God. So that's what does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, like, I'm obviously mounting the spots. I jump hard, do a 360. I get a boost. I jump even higher. And I'm sure that um, comes into like, you will need to do that you, at certain you points need to, here. Yeah, you need to use that to obviously build height over platforms, whatever. Mm. But where the real depth of the game comes in is that, um, so there's that. I mean, that sounds very simple. And it is very simple to understand, you know. But where the depth comes in is that the, the surface you land on, the angle obviously affects how you bounce up. So if you land on a flat surface and you aim, like if you land perfectly straight, whatever, you're going to bounce straight up in the air. But there's no flat surfaces in this game. Everything's got like a slight tilt or a very steep angle. And it like really screws with you because it's very precise. How you land dictates where you go. Mm-hmm. Um, and this game has proven to be incredibly frustrating. But what I've been telling everyone, I can't even be mad at the game because it's actually very well made. Like it feels good to bounce around. And the puzzles are designed like any other good platformer like there's just a very specific way of doing it and when you learn how to do it it is very satisfying however the game is just designed to be very difficult to the point where uh, i think there's two levels in the game but i I haven't even looked at the second level i'm only on the first level and it shows you your progress i've made i'm probably 40 i think i'm 48 percent of the way through the first level Uh uh, after 10 hours of (gasps) playing this game close on 11 hours fuck that um but here's here's the kicker okay so i got to i think after my first stream so let's say five hours i got to the parts i'm stuck on now it's like a part just by a tree on thursday i streamed a full five hours and i've progressed like half a percent one oh one percent up God. the tree because where the game really messes with you is that if you if you do a puzzle wrong there are certain parts of the game where you can fall back down like lots to levels you've already overcome before um oh, so, so yeah, there's no like be, there's no like checkpoint no 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 no, no oh, absolutely God. not and there's there's very few safe zones where like if you fall you'll just land in this area or whatever mm-hmm. so what happens is the part i'm climbing there's just this huge open gap on the left and if you bounce wrong you just fall down the mountain like a very very long way but this is where i'm like my, me being stubborn sometimes it's a good thing in this case it's a curse because I yeah. like, refuse to give up on this game. But I, I say that, but I, I do still admit that it's a lot of fun. Like, it is satisfying. It's got mm. all those core qualities of a good platformer that I really enjoy. It's just really difficult. And it's, oh, it's, 
it's weird because it's a bit it's a bit cathartic i know it doesn't look like it's cathartic when i'm like getting upset oh, definitely like, not. There, there's that there's a great clip of you streaming where you just like take off your headphones and walk away i just you walk just, away like, i think this. that's the only time because i was like holy shit like <laughs> after all of this, where did you go <laughs> did you just go punch a hole in the wall or no i just i was like i see to take a two minute break from this quickly <laughs> um but but it's interesting is that so like i've said i've fallen down before and like any good platformer so like here's here's a good example if you've played you've played celeste you play the main campaign those mm-hmm. first few levels are very challenging because it takes mm-hmm. you a while to figure out how to do it whatever but then you go back and you start collecting the strawberries and you, sure, you start through those destroying first levels those levels yeah because and then it, they're actually very easy you're like oh like i understand this game well i'm i really understand the movements it's not that difficult mm-hmm. and this game has element like it takes a lot longer i feel to learn that in this game um, but it definitely has that. So the the times when I've fallen down and like literally remember that overcoming the one section you have to repeat took me like nearly four hours to get to the top of it. My goodness. I fell down and I managed to do it in like the first 10 minutes. So like it's weird how there's that muscle memory that just kicks in and you just mm-hmm. understand. You've done it so many times, you understand how to do it again now. I mean, on Thursday, I fell down maybe 10 times I'd say but I managed to get up that part like with almost minimal fuss every time um, so yeah I, I'm going to give it like a, a Thursday was a, an evening of soul searching I was like do I carry on <laughs> yeah 0.5% do I, do, is uh, do I carry on playing this game because like in damn. my head I'm thinking it took me 5 hours to make that little progress like am I going to spend 100 hours playing this mm. game for example mm. and it's not worth it you know if it's that long it's not worth it um but i've decided i will keep trying i'll play it again on tuesday and see if i can get past the section and take it from there because I, i've seen i've looked up reviews now and it's actually if you want, want to laugh go read some steam reviews of this game there's some wild outlandish <laughs> things that i've said like i think the thing yeah. that that i i mean i've only watched briefly you play but like the thing that sticks out to me is one of the hardest elements is that you you never stop moving like your no. character's always pogoing so you never have this like chance of just like standing, surveying your surroundings and like, you know, making a decision. It's always like mm. you're making these little micro hops and you've always got to be adjusting your angle. So it's just mm. like tension all the it's time. It's like always, uh, I'll, this game, I don't think I've ever sweated as much <laughs> in any other game. Just, just from even just doing normal stuff. I'm like, holy yeah. shit, like this is really stressful especially um, i mean considering you say there's very few safe areas so over your five hours there's very few times where you're like able to just take a breather mm. because you can just fall back down yeah well look like the part where i'm at now you're sort of in a, a little pit but the moment you get out of it you you could fall down i mean i i know that there are later parts in the game where you'll just fall back down to almost say the beginning. Mm-mm. But the point is you, you're so good at the, you, you've learned the game enough now that you can, you know, make that up a progress in if very I got, little time. If I got to like an 80% and fell down to 30, I'd just like <laughs> uninstall well, that here's, game. Here's the thing. Okay. So the average playthrough, what I like from what I've read and looked up on Steam reviews and just in general, people say it takes him 20 to 30 hours to finish wow. this level. Okay. That's incredible. But the speed run time is like under four minutes <laughs> oh because they've just they've understood it completely they just so. they, yeah i think i think there are some shortcuts but the people just that's that's how short the level mm. actually is you know it just that extended play time comes from you just repeating the same thing trying to get the movement right and again like i can't be mad at the game because the movement is good and there are those little nuances. So so I'm gonna keep using Celeste as an example because I know you've played that. It's the same as like you get like um you learn little subtle movements of like bouncing in certain directions, that sort of thing. Yeah. In this game it's the same thing I've I've now learned on Thursday. Um there's there's a very there's like a split second when you land where you can adjust your angle. You can actually use that to your advantage to get up some some um points that you actually shouldn't have like some jumps you shouldn't have made at all um so, so like, it's like little, you can are, skyrim your way up a jump <laughs> well yeah i mean there are there are those little nuances which I, on tuesday i didn't know that i was just bouncing off the wall like oh like damn it i got the angle wrong yeah now i'm like oh shit i landed skew but i can quickly adjust and like save this jump you know okay oh, and one one other thing i must mention that the, the game is gracious in that there is a comeback mechanic um which is very hard to pull off, but I'll explain how it works. So if I fall off the mountain, let's say, 
Yeah. I I, I fall 100 meters, whatever. I will bounce back up that same height, which means that if I fall off a platform, I'm going to do a very high jump back up to the same point I fell off. Which means I can uh, recover my jump sometimes. Okay. Now it's very it's very difficult to pull off, but it is possible to recover some mistimed jumps. And I've done some bullshit things this week where I've like looked away and looked back. I'm like, oh my god, I landed back where I started. Like how lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, the, the game the game is very difficult. But I'm I'm gonna keep keep trying to see how it mm-hmm. goes. So watch the space. Sick. It's some poo. Some pergo stuck. Yo, what a pain. But it's it's. Uh, again, it's wildly cathartic. I, I can't explain why. <laughs> Pogo stuck rage with your friends. Mm. My goodness. What a name. It just tells you everything you need to know. It tells you everything you need to know. Um, other than that, I picked up another little game that I, I'd been playing on and off for the, for the past month. It's not even a long game, but I finally finished Hellblade. Sinuous Sacrifice. Nice. Um, so I'll talk about that for a few minutes and just say that that is an excellent game that I think I, I don't know if everyone will enjoy it, but mm-hmm. I can say I thoroughly enjoyed it and I highly recommend people play it. Did you ever figure um, out if that permadeath thing was a permadeath thing? I've looked it up. I think it is a perma thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so just to recap, I was telling Alessandro was it like two, three weeks ago. Uh I started Hellblade on hard difficulty, and the game has a system where the more you die, it it, it basically gives you a message saying like um, you know, every time you die, you get more of the black plague or more more plague um, in Senua. And if it reaches her brain, um, it's her Senua getting ends. COVID. Yeah. Uh, basically, her journey ends. So it's like, oh God, like that really up the stakes. Because any any game you can play on on any difficulty, easy, hard, whatever. You know, you die. You're just gonna keep trying. Mm-hmm. However, this little message popped up, and it made my engagements infinitely more hectic because i was like i can't die I, like oh shit i died if maybe the next death will be the one that's that wipes my save or, or you, however, yeah. the, however the mechanic works um but i think it just made me enjoy the game that much more it made it more personal and it made it more intense and okay. let me tell you senua is not a light game um so just to recap you you're playing as senua obviously uh, she's on a journey to save her her boyfriend Dillion, his soul from hell. Dillion, Dillion, yeah. That sounds like a vegetable. <laughs> Dillion, gonna make a nice Dillion. You're on a, you're on a journey to something. save her boyfriend Cauliflower from Cauliflower, <laughs> broccoli tree, <laughs> broccoli. <laughs> um, but the game uh, focuses on it's 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 a very interesting game in that. Senua has mental health issues um and when you start the game it's not immediate what she's going through but the more you play you start to piece together like her backstory why she is where she is and what why she's going through what she is Mm -hmm. um and it's it's done very well in that she's obviously exploring um how harm but you you learn where she actually is why she's experiencing that and it turns out that like it's like it's a, a mix of reality and what sh- what's going on in her head and it's done okay. very well um so for example while you're playing the game you 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 stumble upon these shrines that give you bits of lore from um norse mythology and it is like here's a story of this like i'm gonna use thor as an example here's a story of thor and you know you get like a part of it then you progress in the level, you find another shrine and it picks up that story. Almost like Mimir in God of War where yeah. he just he tells you pieces of stories every time you're in the canoe. He's like filling the one. you in, yeah. Yeah, but it's funny because they've done it in such a way that obviously the, these North tales have a, a very um, close parallel to what Senu is going through. Okay. Um, and it, it's just, it's such an interesting game how they put it together. So it's broken down into... Um, it's you either exploring, solving a puzzle or combat. Like it's as simple as that. Um, but just the journey you go on and you, as you start to piece together what Senua is going through and what, why she's doing what she's trying to do, by the time you roll credits, you like shit. Like, I don't know, just on me, it left such an impression on me where I'm now excited for Hellblade 2 because I'm like, this is, Senua is a really cool character. Like she's she's really interesting. There's a lot going on inside her. And I don't know where the second game's going to go, what it's going to do, but uh, I'm very excited for it now. Yeah, it's, it seems like that is the one big, like, 
this is a single player narrative game that Microsoft really has that people are excited about. Mm. Um, I think when Senua's Sacrifice came out, like it, it hit, but it didn't really hit. But over time, it's become this like really it's, yeah, big it's cultural like a cult, point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's there's a lot of people who've played it and really enjoy it. Espe- I think, you know, the fact that it came out on all platforms eventually mm. really helps that. But now the next I, one's only on PC and Xbox. So I don't know how this thing ran on Switch. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, it came out on Switch too. It's on too. Switch, yeah. That's so wild. I'd, I'd love to see a port because it's not, it's not like um, a visually groundbreaking game, but it is a beautiful game. Like there are, where, where did you play it? On PC? On PC. Okay. On Xbox Game Pass. What a... What a damn service. Damn. Are you advertising again? Uh, apply, put, put in Harry News <laughs> at checkout. <laughs> create a tag no, but, at checkout. Uh, create a tag. No, but look, uh, I really enjoy this game. And I, I don't want to, like, I'd love to talk about it more, but I don't mm. want to for the pure reason that, um, like, the, the, uh, it's, there are spoilers, I suppose. Like, I can't say, oh, she does this, because it's like, oh, you don't actually know that when you start the game. Mm. Um, but what I will say is that when I was finished, I did watch, the, so the, the main menu has a documentary, Oh, uh, just just like a twenty five minutes, twenty twenty five minutes talk about how this game came to be and how they they made it, um, and it's just fascinating. They consulted with um, doctors and actual like patients who suffer psychosis and similar mental illnesses, hmm. and they made this game like in tandem with these conversations and the notes they got, and the people who played this game. I mean, it's mental health is something you you can't really understand by reading about it or yeah you know whatever and it's even if there are movies about it it's difficult to convey what a person goes through mm. uh, but a lot Especially of people if you haven't felt something similar it's difficult exactly. to like yeah but in like gaming is a different medium in that you are the person controlling it and mm-hmm. there are there are ways and different means to convey something that you won't get from a book or a movie or whatever so these these people that worked with played the game like yeah that's like it's it's really they've done very well putting this game together like as a dumb example the whole time you're playing Hellblade Senua has like three to five voices in her head just talking to it anytime like doubting her or helping her or whatever and like if you're a person who hears voices in your head like that's probably what you go through in everyday life Mm, mm. Um, but on that like this game is worth playing with headphones just for that experience alone it's like yeah it's I would recommend it. It's it's a short game. It's like eight hours. It just took me a while to play it because I was playing like an hour long chunks every now and then. But that that's like moment. something I I I should definitely play because it's like a I wouldn't uh, imagine we're living in a time where eight hours is considered bite size, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's something like short and brief, and the combat mm. looks really good as well. The, I think yeah. The look, the, I don't think the game is like the combat is say as good as god of war or any other like really like bloodborne whatever Mm. um but i really enjoyed it like you can you can see it's weird because you can see the game is made by a small team i think Mm. it was like a team of 20 people but it's it's got still very high production value and it's put together very well um as far as i know it was actually i mean no game is cheap to make but in in relation to other other games they aimed it like a sort of like an in-between between a triple a mm. and a an indie budget sort of thing so yeah i think they well, squeezed a lot of what they could out of the restraints they, the restrictions yeah, they put in themselves they definitely <laughs> cut cut corners so like, i mean and i don't mean that in a negative way i mean the senua is actually portrayed by if i'm not mistaken the team's video editor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is just it's insane to think that and she won an award now, she yeah having, she won having like finished best game now, yeah I think they they initially <laughs> used it as like um like a like screen test thing, more like yeah. a screen test, yeah. And she was just really good, and she pulled it off. And playing the game, having that in the back of my mind, going, this person's never been for training. They've never done voice acting for any other game, not that I'm aware of. It's it's insane. Voice acting so, yeah. and motion capture because there's yeah, a lot of like everything. emotion in mm. there. Yeah, no, that and mm. and again, it's like amazing things can be born out of like the restrictions that you have to work under. If it's like, we have to stick to this budget. Okay, we can't afford like a mm. an expensive uh, voice actress, like let's say, you know, uh, uh, Laura Bailey or something like that. Yeah. Then, you know, you make do and sometimes something special comes out of that. So that mm. it's really cool that it hits. And 
Um, even though I haven't played it, I'm really excited. Oh, I'm glad that Ninja Theory has this like property that tackles mm. like a difficult subject matter, but is also extremely popular in yeah. you know the normal gaming space. So that's mm. really cool. Yeah. So would would recommend. I will play up. that. Definitely will play that, so, especially yeah. on Game Pass. In Game Pass, put in checkpoint wink, wink, chat to nudge, check nudge. out. <laughs> Please, Full Spencer, sponsor us. <laughs> That'd be great. Full Spencer, what? come on our show. <laughs> so what? What have What have you been playing? It's enough um, about me. Let's talk about you. Haven't been playing extremely new games. Put it that way. Um, Ooh. very quickly, I dabbled with uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, that online yes. Final Fantasy, because a uh, mm-hmm. patch five point three came out. So. Basically, that I mean, for pl- for dedicated players, it added some new story content, as far as I can tell. But the big thing for me was that it um, it expanded on the free trial the game offers. So now you don't just have the first games like story content available to you, Realm Reborn. You now have Realm Reborn and the first expansion, which is called Heaven's Ward uh, mm-hmm. or Heaven's Ward, whatever. And you can play up to character level sixty, which uh i've seen can be around 100 hours of play um Shut. which is and it's just free there's no limitation there's no restrictions the i think the only restrictions are like you can't be classes that were only introduced in later expansions like mm-hmm. shadowbringers and stuff like that yeah so it's really like this really big essentially like two final fantasy games worth of content for free that you can try out mm. and patch 5.3 apparently reduce some of the early grind uh, to streamline the the opening hours a bit more. So I was oh, like, okay, cool. well, there's no better time to like give it a go. I've only played it for like two hours, which is nowhere near enough to talk about like an mm. MMO. Um, I will definitely say that it is very MMO-ish. There's like so many menus. Um, mm. It's actually quite easy to kind of pass like your ability bar um because i'm playing on ps4 so i'm using a controller Mm. that aspect of it is pretty um easy to understand but the beginning the game is just like this is this menu you need to know about this is this menu this is that Uh, menu yeah and i've spoken to um a friend of mine michael heim who works at GameSpot. he's like huge into final fantasy 14 and he wrote a really good guide on how to like get started with it but basically he's just like don't really worry about a lot of those menus at the start you just really need to know like your map and everything mm. else will will come with time. So, um, I know it's hard to like put that out of your mind when it's just bombarding you with things like that. Yeah. But once once I was um, uh, you know, kind of comfortable with with that all, then the game kind of like set off, and I was happy. And mm. it felt like it felt like an MMO, but it felt like a Final Fantasy as well. It's very whimsical, mm. and That's it's cool. it's not the sort of it's not the sort of Final Fantasy setting I'm super into. Like, I mm. like the more futuristic style ones. Like, 15 mm. has a good mix of, like, modern day technology with magic. And, like, 7 yeah. is very much future magic. Mm. This, to me, feels like... It doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy 9, which is all medieval. But it feels like, I don't know, I guess 12 um oh, the one i haven't played <laughs> yeah it, 12 is the one with all the zephyrs isn't it oh uh, yeah. yes okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's sort of like that it's like it's got technology but it's like a it's like a mix between like medieval times and like steampunkish mm. things you know yeah but maybe that's just the opening area that i started at you know so mm. I'm, I'm not entirely sure um the character creator is really in depth and what what's really cool i haven't dabbled with it but i've read about it is that you can change your class at any time um your class oh, wow. is basically determined by the weapon that you equip mm. so essentially if you are if you are a certain class and you are sick and tired of the sort of like jobs that you do because there's jobs that are as mm. far as i can tell specific to classes that you choose you can change your main weapon respec in that weapon well not respec because there's no there's no skill trees or anything like you level up very linearly so um like your your main weapon just adapts to the skills that you have Mm. and then you can basically take on an entirely new role and you can 
um, kind of like spec in multiple different jobs at the same time to just kind of get as much content as uh, you okay. want out of the game. Yeah. Sure. And the, the only time where it starts becoming like really intense with like, okay, you need to take a DPS or a healing role or whatever is when you're doing like end raids and stuff like that. Mm. This, as far as I can tell, this is very much a game you can play on your own uh, and just like match make with people for instance dungeons or stuff like that. Um, That's cool. But it's an RPG that you can kind of play at your own pace on your own. So yeah, I, it, that 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 sort of thing appeals to me. And you know, the beginning was like, yeah, I'll go kill five things in this field and come back <laughs> and whatever. And it's like, yeah, okay, Handed this is an MMO. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's got a charm to it that I kind of want to see a bit more. And apparently, mm. the story is really good. But I know it's a time investment, so I'm like still mm, weighing yeah. up whether. I will stick with it as much. But I started it, you know, I had to get it out of my mm. system and I want to go back to it sort of, you know what I mean? Well, I think so. your, your time investment decision is much easier than mine. Do you spend 30 hours exploring Final Fantasy fourteen or 30 hours bouncing on a pogo stick? Hmm? Yeah. What are you going to choose? <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I'm not going to say I made the right decision there, but I will say for me... <laughs> I made the right decision. The right decision. <laughs> it would be cool, like if if you gave it a go sometime, and then we could uh, we could play together. Yeah, I do definitely want to. I mean, look, I've given some MMOs a bit of time, and I know that's not fair because MMOs you need to, I think, give a fair bit of time before you like mm. oh, this is for me or not for me. Uh, but I often fall off very quickly. Like I'll do exactly like you said. I'll play two three hours, and it is go fetch five things, go do yeah. these two things. And I'm like, uh, like this isn't really great. But I know that's just how MMOs start out. It is that mm -hmm. fetch quest. And it does take time for you to get into the, you know, the nitty gritty of it. Um, Final Fantasy fourteen is one of those things where I absolutely love the Final Fantasy franchise. I mean, I've played all of them except 12. Let's say yeah. the main, main, the main um You've played far more than franchise. I have, yeah. Um, and online is just one of those things where I'm like, I should play it, but I just have never gotten around to it. But the fact that there's now this, you know, you can do the first two expansions or the, the base game plus some expansions for free, I'm like, well, there's no better time to do it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's on PlayStation and PC, which is cool. So, and yeah. it's crossplay as far as Oh, I'm man, aware. that that uh, <laughs> that interface is very much designed for PC. Like, you, oh, are, yeah. you are, when you're logging in and you're, uh, I mean, when you're in the game, it works with controller just fine. Mm. Um, it's got a few quirks, but it's just fine. But like the first thing you're greeted with before you even get to the main menu of the game is like a web browser where you have to enter your <laughs> username and password and you're using like the PlayStation 4's like, touchpad okay, to, to navigate a mouse. It's like very, yeah. wow, they really got this working on here. Mm. Um, Shit. But like, you know, like you said, I, I think it, both of us, have people that we know i know garth plays final fantasy mm. 14 uh, i know umar plays final fantasy 14 and it's just like you know garth is someone i know who who's into mmos like he played wow for a very long time so mm. it's it's a game that i know he would have enjoyed but there's also people that i know that say this is like their first mmo that has really grabbed them you know, mm. um, but a lot of that also comes from the story, which, as far as I can tell, really kicks off after the expansion. Oh no! That is that <laughs> is well, well, it kicks off in Heaven's Ward, but it's like Realm Reborn is a good starter, but it really it's mm. the end of Realm Reborn where things kick into high gear, and I'm like, I don't know well, if I have that time investment. How, how wild is this? So let's just step into history quickly. I mean, Realm Reborn was a reboot of Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, because it failed so Remember hard. That? It failed. Yeah. And yeah, here's a little fun, interesting nugget. Um, that was the first Gamescom I went to. I interviewed some person from Square Enix about how they're rebooting Final Fantasy XIV. That's it, crazy. It was, it, was, it was such a weird interview, only, only because of the language barrier, where I've told you this before. I, I'd ask a question. The translator would translate it into Japanese. Mm -hmm. The person I was interviewing would answer it, and the person translated back to me. So like what would it be makes a, a five interview like five interview times longer yeah made it incredibly long but it, it is i still really i must actually go find that video i really enjoyed it and it was i mean that was them rebooting the game and mm. that was six years ago I, and there's, like, look there's at a, it now, there's a great um no clip did a documentary about it because it's like 
it's one of those great comeback stories in gaming because like mm. it was so bad at launch apparently. Yeah. Um, and for for not only Square Enix to give the team a chance to really go, we are literally taking this game offline and we mm. are coming back with it, Gonna and for it, for it yeah. to hit in such a strong way, mm. um, you don't hear about that very often. So yeah, yeah. it's a cool. It's a th- there's Good a cool them. there's a cool story behind it. Yeah, and it seems like. All the expansions since have been super good. Like Shadowbringers mm. came out, I think, last year, and like everyone just loves it. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You see, it's those things that make me want to go. Like, I have to give it time to see what everyone is talking about. Mm. Um, so, I I think I'm gonna, you know, when when I tried WoW back in the day, I gave myself until I got to like level twenty or ten. Mm. Uh, I WoW really never grabbed me at all. Mm. Um, Guild Wars was the same. Like Guild Wars, I really love the combat in Guild Wars too, but it never grabbed me beyond yeah. that. Um, so I'm like, everyone loves this game. I need to give it an honest shot. And if I get to like 10, 15 hours and I'm really like, I'm having to force myself to play it, then I'll drop it, you know, whatever. You I, gave, it, yeah. I gave it a chance. Um, mm. But like you said, two hours is not, no, is not enough mean, for an MMO. Yeah, And that, that applies to many games <laughs> yeah that applies to a lot of games yeah like, I, I, I know it's frustrating for, for a lot of people it is a thing of like I, i'll recommend a game for example but it's like yeah the game really picks up after 15 hours oh, whatever. Fuck it's, off. it's a yeah. hard it's a hard thing to to grapple with like so in the same vein final fantasy 15 is one of those games where i'm like it, it wasn't yeah. the best final fantasy but I, I stuck it out to the end. I'm like, yeah, and playing it for those end credits was worth it. But you can't sell that to someone. Fa- like Final, Final Fantasy 15 is the reverse problem. It's fantastic in exactly. its first 15 hours, and then it and kind then of it like tapers out, yeah. off, and you're like mm. wondering, why mm. am I continuing <laughs> to play this? Yeah, it makes a yeah. great first impression. But man, halfway through 15, the fucking like wheels come on. off that car. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, hey, but then you stick it out to the credits. Like, damn, that it is ends this. strong. It ends super mm. strong, but. Whew, that train section yeah. and that secret <laughs> base section. I oh, know it's not. And that you stupid just play, fight in the water. Fuck that thing! I, you should just play a, a real Final Fantasy game, like Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, I must say, when I started this, I was like, I'm really pushing through in this MMO. Maybe I should just start Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you haven't gone to it. I mean, it came out in I know March. April. It's yeah. so good. April, yeah. Good lord, like. They put out a trailer for, oh, not a trailer, oh, was it a trailer? There, there was like a recap video or something like, an, oh, an accolade trailer, I suppose, is the right mm. term. And I watched it, I was like, damn, I should replay this game. What I've a game. i played it twice in like the last four months. But no, I haven't so even good. touched I it. it. I played the demo. Oh my God, I really loved it. But yeah, that's Final Fantasy Hour. Yeah, 14. Um, and then just what very briefly, uh, I think last week I spoke about, I was like playing Mass Effect 2 again. Um, or was it the week before? Mod- I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. I, I, I downloaded Mass Effect 2 again. I modded it, whatever. I was just like, I really want to play it. And then through playing Mass Effect 2, I was like, you know, I didn't give Andromeda a real shake. So Andromeda is the mm. fourth Mass Effect. It was like EA's attempt at rebooting the series after three mm. um, new developer or by well not new developers a different team at bioware handling it whatever Mm. notoriously super buggy game at launch like really Mm. terrible first impression at launch and just in general like it reviewed nowhere near as good as the main final fantasy series it didn't it didn't have the characters the (laughs) yeah not yeah mass effect sorry um it didn't have the characters or the story that made you know the original three so good and um so i'm coming to it knowing all of that and Mm. i'm having a good time with it like yes my companions are nowhere near as engaging as like garris or liara or um tally from the original trilogies i actually like Mm. despise some of my companions like they're really boring (laughs) um (laughs) but the the core hate them the core loop of the game is quite cool, like visiting planets and finding if they're habitable and like making them habitable is, is quite fun. It looks tremendous. Um, mm. I think the frost, I mean, it looks like what I expect a modern Mass Effect to look like, even if some of the animation, like this sprinting animation looks super weird. I don't know. Mm. There's something off about it. It just, the legs don't look right. 
it, it bugs me, but I can't pinpoint why. But <laughs> um, it's like it's a much more streamlined Mass Effect. Like you can do these little boosts up and these little boost dashes while in combat. Um, the combat is really, really good. I find mm. um, I'm specking in a more like I love the biotics in the game, which is basically like Mass Effect's version of a Jedi. Like I can just do Very fucking nice. cool space shit. I can pull mm. people. I can push people. I can do all sorts of things. So what they've done with that system is some attacks are called primers and some are detonators. So some attacks okay. will prime an enemy to be hit by another power that then combos mm. them. And that feels super good. Um, nice. It definitely leans very hard into like a third person shooter territory where I can only have three powers at a time. Whereas previous games, I could assign three powers to quick, you know, like quick uh, mm. buttons, but I always had a, a weapon wheel that I could open and choose any one at any time. That's uh, like okay. gone. Like you can only Damn. have three at a time, which I feel is very restrictive. I also can't command my teammates' powers, which seems super stupid. Um, mm. I can tell them where they go, automated. but I can't. <clears throat> I can't edit their loadouts or when they use specific abilities no oh, so they're I don't really know if, are just there yeah so it's filler. they're really just there and that sucks um so it feels far less role play uh mm. but other than that like i'm i don't know i'm like 10 hours in i'm having a good time it's like i'm super aware of its shortcomings and if i had played this at launch like super hyped for a new mass effect 100 percent, i would have been disappointed be, by this be sad but like removed from it and like understanding it's it's um it's fallbacks like it's it's good there's also a new alien race which i just met yesterday while i was playing that i suddenly like super interested in so mm -hmm. i'm curious to see that uh but yeah okay. it's it's fun i'm playing this instead of ghost of tsushima so that tells you a lot about my thoughts on ghost oh. of tsushima <laughs> <laughs> just that game is not hooking me i just cannot not grabbing you yeah i I need to sit down with it and really just play like for a few hours at a time because I think the one, two hours at a time is not working for me in that game. Mm. Um, no, I feel you. When I started the game, I mean, it was just, I had the same thoughts. It was like, I'd just come off The Last of Us. It's like, this is not as good as The Last of Us. Mm. But it, it reaches a point where like any other game, like it just clicks and you're like, okay, like I get this game now. But maybe it won't do that for you and it yeah. doesn't have to. So. I, I mean, it's... Yeah, like I said, I think I just need to give it more time than I am giving it. But like, I don't know, my my, my head at the moment was like, I need a comfort food game, which is why I went back to Mass Effect mm. 2. And Mass Effect Andromeda is a new game, but it's got enough of those elements that it still feels familiar. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. Uh, should we get into game releases? Game uh, releases. We're at minute 50, so oh. we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I, I just remembered. I'm not going to talk about it, but I, I picked up Spider Man again <gasps> this week. I don't yeah, know. I still. I can't believe you never finished that when I, you were I, playing. I, I I can't believe I fell off that game. It must have been. I don't know if we got reviews stuff in or I just played something else. But I I picked up. I was like, what are the buttons again? Whatever. Now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to finish this game. What a oh, game! It's real good. What a game! Super good. Yeah. So I'll um, talk about that soon. Cool. So we're looking at games releasing between today, which is August 15th. Can you believe it? Um, until <sighs> year gone. to August 21st. Uh, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, not too many. Um, first up, we got Mortal, Mortal Shell, which is that like... Oh, uh, the Dark Souls-ish Dark Souls -ish -ish. thing. It's yeah. only $30, so I'm wondering if it's going to be a much shorter game. Uh, than people are expecting. But um, it's got a cool visual style, and I like the idea of, like, you are this, like, weakling who embodies the shells of former enemies, and that changes, like, your attack patterns and weapons and mm. stuff. I think that's a cool little hook. That's cool. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, August 18th. Also August 18th, Microsoft Flight Simulator, coming to PC, finally. Also going to um, be on Game Pass. Yeah, I'm curious to to check that out. Yeah, I'm curious to give that a go. It is coming to mm. Xbox later this year, which is mm. fascinating, which I'm hoping means when it launches on PC next week, it will have good controller support. Um, mm. 
Yeah, I mean, Flight Sim is a game that I'll probably download and boot up to just go, wow, this game is yeah, beautiful. Like, wow, but yeah. I, can't, I'll, I probably won't actually play it. Yeah, it's it's a game that I'll keep installed to be like, hey, you know Flight Sim? Remember Flight Sim? Remember what that looked like? <laughs> Check this shit. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm planning a trip to... Uh, uh, Amsterdam. Let me just fly there quickly and handle it. Exactly. Oh, wow, yeah. Nah, not for me. Let's uh, let's check something else. It's apparently a visual masterpiece. Like yeah. I've, I've watched so many videos on the the like because that game is using telemetry from Actual, Bing yeah. and then using AI to like recreate. It's like proper magic. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. So from that perspective, I kind of want to see it as well because it just looks mm. incredible. Um, so yeah. Uh, also on August 18th, Rogue Legacy 2 coming to Steam Early Access on PC. Now, mm. Rogue Legacy, everyone loves Rogue Legacy. It's a lot of people's like first real roguelike that they got into it. I've been playing it recently on Switch. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I like that game. Like, the combat feels super weird. And I feel like either I'm I'm being too brash and too like headstrong in that game, but I feel like I'm making no progress. Mm. Um, so Should I don't know if good. I'm playing it wrong, <laughs> but I've never played Rogue Legacy, but I mean, uh, isn't yeah. that one of the OG, it's the, uh, yeah, one of the OG that roguelikes the OG? that everyone yeah. like loves. Uh, it does have a really cool mechanic where every character you play as after you've died is like a, like not a sibling, like offspring of your character. So it's like a real lineage and they adopt mm. traits from like previous parents which is a cool mechanic yeah. i think um that's cool but i don't know I, everyone's excited about the second one i maybe i need to play the first one a bit more but mm. yeah i struggle to get excited because i'm just like man i'd really n- i'm not enjoying the first one um <laughs> but anyway well, maybe the second one will improve yeah maybe I mean, it's maybe been a, it's been a long time uh peaky blinders mastermind coming to pc ps4 xbox one and switch on august 20th that's based that's on a, that um series peaky blinders yeah. i've never watched peaky it my parents blinders. have watched it they liked it a lot um Pe- yeah I've, I've heard a lot of people enjoy it oi mate uh what? series <laughs> is it in australia oh uh, no no it's it's like it's like industrial revolution <laughs> england oi oi the crocs in the billabong <laughs> wow okay yeah that's definitely peaky blinders yes um if i'm not mistaken this is like an ex comish game i don't know yeah, uh, maybe peaky blinders i don't know i, I just no like that idea. name i think peaky blinders is a, is a good good mouthfeel name you could, you could uh, swap it out you call it cheeky blinders hey <laughs> uh august 20th is also blast from the past year the last time one of these games launched i don't think i was born or <gasps> I was one years old or something. Uh, Battletoads mm. coming to PC oh, and Xbox wow. One. Battletoads, um, this the, the 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 Xbox game you've all been waiting for. Yeah, I <laughs> listen. I like the visual style of this thing. I think it mm. really nails the Saturday morning cartoon sort of vibe. But yeah. like that's about it. Like I have no real love for this franchise because I was but a a wee a lad wee. when. It first launched. But a wee like, cheeky blinder. Yeah, <laughs> but a wee peaky blinder. Uh, did you ever play Battletoads back no, in the day? No, no? but that, that, yeah, I was also going to say, um, I think the reason people like you and I aren't hot on it is because I just have no touch point with the, mm, with the, franchise. the franchise at all. And yeah. I, I presume, I mean, from what I've seen, it looks like it is, you know, a, a Battletoads game, which if you're a fan, then cool. There's a modern day Battletoads game. Mm-hmm, but I mm-hmm. look at it, I'm like, nah, I don't know if it's and for me. As far as I can tell, like the uh, the people that that did play the originals are looking at this and going, "This is not what I wanted from a sequel from oh, this." Really? So it's like it's not attracting <laughs> new people and not yeah. really attracting old people. So uh, yeah, it's uh, wild. Um, and then the last game for the week: PGA Tour Two K Twenty One. Do you like golf? I don't like golf. I mean. Have you played golf? No. You see, there's a difference between watching golf, play like playing golf as in like although Are golf sure? games can be fun. Actual actual golf is very enjoyable. Like I enjoy it. I like arcade but, golf games like uh, Mario Golf uh, or everybody recently golf. What the Golf. Everybody's what golf. Yeah, golf. those are fun. Right but like simulation golf, me, me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like Mario PGA Tennis. Love, love Mario Tennis. Actual, mm. I love playing tennis in real life, but 
tennis video games? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're talking about Rockstar Table Tennis. Now, is that, now is we're that, talking. That's the game. Mm, That's the mm. game. That game is hot. That game shit. deserves shit. a sequel or something. But yeah, Pete, but, um, this is the only game coming out this week that's also coming to Stadia. Remember Stadia? What a time. Right. Oh, nice, man. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool, is cool, that, cool, is cool. That, is that all the, the game releases? Yeah. Let's get to game news. <laughs> Gaming news. Big wow. game shall we, news. Shall we, just, shall we just kick off the week with Yo. the the whole Fortnite debacle? Yeah, so I think that, that is, is one of the two big stories a, from this week. But uh, Fortnite, yeah, quite an evolving story. Mm. Yeah, Fortnite. So basically, um, when was it? Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. This all kind of happened. Fortnite activated a alternative payment method on its uh, Apple and or oh, iOS and Android versions of the game, which um, basically allowed players to circumvent. Uh, Apple's in-app purchases and Google's mm. Play Store purchases so that they would get no royalties from the purchase of V-Bucks. And mm. the consequence of this was that players could get the V-Bucks for cheaper. Um, mm. It was a discount that was applied uh, platform like across all platforms, but it's only on iOS and Android where this starts becoming a bit of an issue for the platform holders. Yeah. Um, so Epic is very clever. Like, they disguise this as a move to give back to the players, but mm. Apple and Google take 30% of all transactions through them. They only reduce the price by 20%. So mm. they were circumventing the 30% royalty and gaining 10% profit while coming off as we are doing this for the players. So very sneaky, mm. very sneaky. Yeah. But what is... what? What happened shortly after, because of course it did, Apple removed Fortnite from the App Store, Google did the same because it breaks their terms of service, and Epic obviously knew this was going to happen because they had a whole video ready, basically mm. like announcing their lawsuits against uh, Apple and, and Google, which are now in the courts. Um, Goddamn. Feels very weird for a billion dollar company to be calling on the community going free Fortnite as if they are some scrappy underdogs. Mm. Um, super weird. But as much as I, you know, there's a lot of irony to Epic's um, framing of this entire thing, the outcome of this fight could have big impacts for everyone uh, making mm. apps for, for the App Store. And it really in my view, required someone with the financial backing of an Epic to to really fight against Apple in this because yeah. there's no way an indie developer was going to manage to do the same. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a big thing. I mean, it's going to the courts now. Apple's in, Apple's in the news, uh, you know, right now in the US, they are undergoing like antitrust and anti-competitive um, hearings. So all mm. of this is like very well timed on Epic's part. It's very purposeful. Yeah. Um, I saw yesterday that Facebook was now, uh, well, basically like lending their voice just in support of Epic, which I'm also like, <laughs> like <Say> Facebook, <laughs> like no one likes you. Go away. <laughs> no. You're you're all, you you've also leave. got your own problems. You're just also leave, like yeah. <laughs> under investigation for like voter manipulation and misinformation so, so don't fucking come here like, don't come here stay in your lane just yeah, just go in lane. um that's the, crazy the big thing was that i saw a, a valve's gabe newell support epic which is fascinating because like epic is basically trying to do on ios what they did on pc they want their own store exactly, yeah yeah mm. but uh i mean Epic's Tim Sweeney has been vocal about Apple's store policies for years now. This is not a recent thing. But at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of want Epic to win in a in in some capacity, not because of what it will do to them, but it will help hopefully reduce the royalty fees that much smaller studios have to pay mm. Apple for every single thing, like 30% and whatever. And mm. I understand the argument that it's like, Yes, this is Apple's platform. They should be allowed to dictate what happens on it. But Apple's like super restrictive. Like this is the reason their policies are the reason why xCloud and Stadia aren't on iOS because their store policies mm. don't allow you to connect to services like that. 
and that's their prerogative but it's like they have to play ball they mm. they do have a, no- a monopoly on that and what they say goes and if you don't like it well cheers you know and that's all mm. good and well when there's so many other alternatives but they are like the biggest marketplace in the world so it's a weird thing that i hope I hope changes somewhat in the courts. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a weird, weird story because I, I yeah, yeah, I'm also like, it's weird that Fort um, Epic are mobilizing their player base. Like they are, you know, we we are the underdogs. Like we don't have, you know, what it takes to fight this fight. But it's like, no, you oh do. God. Yeah, you do. You <laughs> are the Epic, one company yeah. in the world that can fight this fight. Yeah. yeah. But then when you look at it from that angle, it is like, well, they actually are the only people who could arguably do this fight because mm. they have the means to do it, and it is them using their player base like whether you agree with it or not maybe it will help change apple store policy i don't know mm. um but it, it is interesting because i think from my, my point of view epic i don't i can't say i agree or disagree with what they're doing but they are very good at shaking up like existing formulas like we've seen it on pc uh, steam had the monopoly I, would, well, I mean, there were other platforms, obviously, but Steam is the go-to platform. Yeah. Then Epic came along like, cool, we're here. We've got our own storefront. We'll only take 12% royalty, whatever the fee is, which like se- is severely cheaper than what Steam does. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, mixes up the PC playing field. And I can't say whether it's had like a massive impact on Steam sales or whatever, but I must imagine that it did make Steam stop and think like, oh, okay, we need to keep an eye on this. Well, well, Steam ended go. up changing their royalty structure in in response. Oh, did they? Yeah, but they changed it in a way that it would only benefit um, big publishers because I assume that's uh, where they were losing most of their money to to Epic. So mm. now, like their fee, their royalty structure, like the base royalty fee is still thirty percent, but the more money or sales your game do, uh, makes, the less royalty oh, you the pay. Less, okay. So it's like the Ubisofts so and the the <laughs> Warner Brothers and uh, the EAs okay. are like, okay, cool, we're going to sell millions, so eventually we're going to pay less royalties, but it makes no mm. difference to indie developers. Okay, um, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Epic Store really, really entices indie developers because it's now suddenly like, well, I'm paying 18% less on each sale of a game. Yeah. You know, so it's in that regard, I'm hoping they shake up Apple in the same way. But mm. I think it's a very different fight because, like, Windows is an open platform to an extent. Mm. Yeah. Um, Apple, you know, iOS is their platform. Um, it's theirs, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I can't say one way or the other whether Epic is going to win or not. Um, I do think that depending on how this lawsuit shakes out, it changes the landscape going forward. Because if Epic loses... Mm. Um, Apple's grip oh on their ecosystem just tightens even further. Um, yeah. No one is going to try and do what Epic did if if they lose. And in the mm. same way, if Epic wins, what does that mean? You know, what will actually change? Um, and yes, Epic is doing this out of self-interest. They want more money. They don't mm. want to pay a third of every sale to Apple. So they can talk yeah. shit about this is for indie developers all they want. But at the end of the day, it's for their They're bottom making, line. You know, yeah. Oh, look, in terms of PR, this is, sure, they've done very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they've they done very well. It's it's super weird, though, how they mobilize their fan base, but, like, at the end of the day, it's going to be settled in the court, so it doesn't matter how mm. many people are screaming on Twitter about it. Like, it's going through due process, so whatever. Mm. Well, uh, I'd, be, I'd be curious to know if, if there are people out there who are like, I mean, I've got an iPhone, but I can tell you, like, I enjoy my iPhone. I'm probably still going to keep buying iPhone mm-hmm. even if I can't play Fortnite on it. But you will get people who are like, well, yeah, screw Apple. I'm not going to support them. Yeah, so definitely. I don't know. Like, what, what is the impact going to be? I mean, Apple still prints a lot of money. Will, will they actually feel it? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it, talking from personal capacity, just just the xCloud nonsense that Apple is pulling, like not allowing xCloud on there already makes me like really angry yeah, you start like, thinking, at, yeah. at the platform because... To me, that's even more egregious because it's not like Microsoft's trying to circumvent some some payment system. They are like, mm. we just want to be able to connect to this cloud store. And Apple's like, no. No. <laughs> it's like, okay. Not fam. It's yeah, that that to me is more more of a, a good example of how Apple's store policies stifle like progress in the app space more than, you know, mm. Epic's not getting the money that they think they they deserve 
Um, yeah. And I don't think this court case will change that. So I, mm. for the time being, I think xCloud is dead on iOS and it's going to remain that way for probably for ever. Who knows? Mm. Yeah, but so yeah. that's the one big story this week. The other one, at least, uh, holy shit, Halo Infinite got delayed. Um, yep. When's the last time you you were al- were allowed to witness a launch game of that caliber? My being God, I Shut. I think this really just shows how and un- like unpredictable this year is. That a game mm. of that magnitude that has been in development for so long that is. You know, it's got the hopes of a new console generation riding on it can be delayed. Delayed, yeah. No game is safe. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. holy shit. I, I don't know. You know, you had you had reporters out there like Patrick Klepek saying he had heard from developers that that game was coming in hot already, um, and I think after the showing last month which was not taken super well i think 343 probably had some really hectic discussions with microsoft saying mm. listen you only get one chance to make a good impression and this is not going to be this it. is this is yeah so yeah it's it's crazy it, it's crazy that the xbox series x and well the series s now that got leaked with that that controller um mm it's not getting a big exclusive at launch. Like it will have, it will probably have third party exclusives. Like I think the medium is coming out at launch. Um, there was a, a Yakuza, uh, like a dragon mm. is mm. coming to Xbox at launch. So it's got these like, and both of those are going to be on game pass. So it's got these big third party titles, but like mm. it does not have a it Xbox doesn't have game. A Halo. Yeah. It doesn't I have mean, a that's... Halo or a Forza or yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. I mean, we we've we've spoken about this how people forget that a lot of consoles don't launch with the best lineup. Like Definitely there are exceptions, not, yeah. and there's usually like maybe one or two gems. I mean, I think like a good recent example is the Switch was cool. It launches it launched with Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and that's all you could play for. I mean, besides indies, of course, but that is all you could really buy a Switch to play. The for Switch the first launched few months, with three you know? games, like. Yeah, it's Breath it of the was, Wild, Snipper Clips, and One Two Switch. Yeah, it was like very, very bare. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. You look at the Switch now, and it's great because it's got a lot of games to play. And yeah, I mean the Xbox Series X, it doesn't have a Halo though, which is like, mm. like the Switch did have Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that's something to go like, shit. I need to buy this console to play this. That that's a, that's is, the thing. Like the Switch launched with three games, but one of the games mm. it launched with was like one of the best games ever created. I mean, and so, Halo is, like, Xbox is Halo. Like, yeah. they are one and the same. You know, that that brand is so tied to Xbox. I mean, uh, Xbox is so tied to Halo and vice versa. It's so weird that it's being delayed and not launching. But you know what? I think, I don't know who said it, but it's like no no game that's been delayed, we know, did it for the wrong reasons or mm. came out worse as a result. Yeah. So I think I think they are taking that feedback. I must imagine that, COVID and everything aside, they did listen to the reactions to the showcase and thought, shit, maybe we have missed the mark or maybe we do mm. have some work to do here. Let's just write, like instead of, you said, you know, if first impressions last, yeah. let's let's make a good first impression. Let's delay it rather. Yeah. And that's fun. You know, so, so what? You're going to have no Halo in November, December. You're going to have other games to play and then maybe, I don't know how long they're delaying for, but let's say June mm. next year or whatever. Then you've got a really like a much better Halo game as a result. So yeah, because they 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 just said um uh twenty twenty one. So I, I think I think they're gonna take a while. Yeah, uh, I imagine I, they're I gonna think, do. I think at the very least they should take a year. To be honest, mm. um, I also think like maybe September next year or sometime then they're gonna launch yeah. it. And uh, I I was watching a great discussion uh, between the guys at um digital foundry and one of the things they brought up which i don't think will happen because i don't think it's feasible at this point of development they were like this game needs to drop xbox one support like now um yeah i don't know if they'll do that i don't think they'll do that and i think even if they did a year is not long enough to make these sort Mm. of changes to a game that capitalize only on your new hardware so i don't Mm. think that that's going to happen but i do think what they can do with this this delay now is like revisit 
uh, you know, their, their core art direction because they are definitely going for a nostalgic halo feel and maybe that's not working with whatever like lighting they have in their engine. It's just coming mm. off as like very plasticky and like mm. undetailed. So that's something that can definitely change. Um, yeah. And the thing, I think the biggest thing is they can launch with that ray tracing update because mm. last month they were like, oh, ray tracing is coming sometime next year. I'm like, that is a fucking poor That's move. Too, like, yeah. you are buying a brand new console that is capable of all these fancy features and you're saying it's only coming later. No, next it needs to, it needs to launch with that. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think, the de- I think the delay, I'm more shocked that Microsoft allowed it more than anything. Like, yeah. I don't think the delay is a bad idea. It's just like, I would, n- there must have been such a heated discussion. Um, I know Phil Spencer in an interview said that they even considered launching it in parts, and I think that would have been even Ooh, worse. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's big, but like you said, launch, you, you only launch a console once, and the Xbox One, even today, is still suffering from its poor messaging at its launch in 2013. Mm. The last thing it needed this gen was like it to launch with a Halo game that was completely fucked at Forgotten, launch. Yeah. Um, especially considering Halo time. Infinite is meant to be the platform for that game for the next couple of years. Like if it started mm. off poorly. Mm. Yeah. Look, you get redemption stories, but... You again, do, but that's not how you want to start Halo. a generation of yeah. consoles. Like No. Yeah. I mean, so, it, yeah. it sounds bad now and people will maybe look back and go, you know, maybe when it launches, they go, shit, delaying it was the right choice. That is a much better impression mm. to have than it comes out and then going, it should have been delayed. No, you know? yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's those, the those two, big, two big stories. Big stories. Um, just some quick ones outside of that. Uh, the new Call of Duty continues to be teased. Everyone thought it was coming, the, the big reveal was coming <laughs> on Friday and that never happened, so... I don't know. Surprise. Surprise. More teasers. I don't know. That game's meant to be out in like two and a half months. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I, I'm always amazed though with Call of Duty that I've, I, it feels like they come out every year and they don't. Because mm. there are times when it's like we have all the half for the latest Call of Duty and then like eight months later, there's a new Call of Duty. But it's like, has the other one really been out only eight months, you know? Yeah. And it tends to work in that cycle. So I'm not shocked that there's a new Call of Duty just around the corner. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like that's partly because Modern Warfare just hits so hard for so many people. They want to keep mm. their momentum going. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know. I guess maybe COVID also changed marketing plans. And I know mm. that this year's game is weird because they got Treyarch on it again. Um oh uh, yeah yeah so it's like it they really shook up like development and marketing so it's like it's not a traditional one in every sense of the word so mm. we'll see i'm good uh, it's we'll apparently see. it seems confirmed now that it's going to be taking place in the cold war again and that the name is call of duty black ops cold war which is ridiculous um <laughs> but yeah. well what what I, i'm curious about is um how does this play into Warzone? um they the did they did uh I, one of the i think it was a creative director at infinity war did say that warzone will continue to be its own thing and mm. adopt elements from the new call of duty so i guess warzone will continue existing as a standalone thing and just like maybe the map will change according to the theming of the new call of duty because no, i but think even, even that though warzone is so interwoven with modern warfare's multiplayer because yeah. can't you can't you level up guns in the traditional multiplayer and then take them over to warzone or my mistake no 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 you can't do well Not. no you can take your that, you can take your loadouts yes and then you can call in a loadout yeah. in warzone so yeah you can do that so yeah, yeah. yeah i'm curious to see how they do that um because it would be a big shift but i think them relaunching mm. a battle royale every year is just not going to happen no yeah, but that's yeah. why i'm like that's that would be crazy so yeah Especially with how okay. how hard Warzone hit, like their previous battle royale blackout never, it's never hit in this way. So yeah, it makes yeah. sense that they would want to keep Warzone mm-hmm. around. Um. Oh, the other thing, Control is getting a new Ultimate Edition. Nice man. Except. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be the base game and the two expansions. Um, eight. Well. What was it? The Foundation and AWE, which mm. is coming out later this month. Uh, no. The issue here is that this is the only edition that will get PS5 and Xbox Series X uh, upgrades. 
which is mm-hmm. kind of shitty. That's weird. Uh, so if you've bought the base game and you've bought the expansion pass and you're playing on PS4, Xbox One, your game will not update with the new... Like, you'll be able to play it with backwards compatibility, but you will not get what I assume will be a ray tracing patch or mm. better frame rate patch or whatever, which is even worse when you consider that game runs pretty poorly on current gen consoles, even the mm. upgraded consoles. Um, yeah, that that's a shit move. Like, straight up, that's a crap move. Um, I don't know if Remedy made that decision or Publisher 505 made that decision, yeah. but it is a bullshit move uh, and a real slap in the face to the people who have bought your season pass and you know bought the game at launch um mm. yeah it's crap it's real crap uh makes it's me happy that i'm playing on pc but yeah <laughs> real crap that what about all the other people man god damn uh da, 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 da. i think that's um, it oh last of us 2 got its uh grounded update so you got to go grounded difficulty mode and permadeath mode and all sorts of gameplay modifiers in a free patch. Um, yeah, I saw that. Horizon uh, Zero Dawn got a very small PC patch, which didn't really fix that much. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He has, he has a he has a new story. Spencer Cell is um, not getting a new game. <laughs> yeah. Sam Fisher's, Sam Fisher's alive though. He's just coming to a. Is it Rainbow Six Siege? Is it yeah. Operator? Sam Fish is getting put in every possible game under the sun except Except, a new Splinter Soul. Except his own. Fuck my life. Yeah. I just want a new Splinter Soul. That's all all I want. I I imagine they must be working on one somewhere. (sighs) That's all I want, man. In the basements of Ubisoft, they, they're working on a new Splinter Cell. Until then, they're just going to keep teasing us. I don't care about anything else. Just give me more Splinter Cell. I <laughs> just want to be sneaky, sneaky Sam boy again. And that's Sam all I want. Boy. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, DC Fandome is happening on August 22nd. And uh, mm-hmm. the schedule has been released. And we now know that Warner Brothers is going to uh, reveal their Batman game, which is apparently called Gotham Knights. Uh, there. Oh, and Rocksteady is going to obviously reveal their Suicide Squad game, which is now officially called Finally. Suicide Squad: colon, Kill the Justice League, which is just like wow. let's get two massive SEO terms in our title. <laughs> um, yeah, and kill the. We all love searching that term. Yeah, people no, love searching kill, kill. Yeah, like when I search for kill the spider, I'm gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get kill the Justice League instead. Kill the oh shit! Okay, wow. Let me buy this game. Amazing. Oh my goodness! So that that's um, happening next weekend. Uh, next weekend, Saturday. So we won't even be able to talk about it next show because it wouldn't have happened yet. Uh, it would not have happened. Why can't people conform the- to our schedule? You know. I don't know. How I mean, rude! We, we're How pretty, fucking we're, rude! We're pretty. We're pretty big. Yeah, I know. We're pretty um, big. I, People should be, you know. <sighs> should just just pick us pick up the phone and ask us these questions, Ubisoft. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean not Ubisoft, sorry. <laughs> DC. <laughs> that's it for news. Um, I think that's, that's news, it. yeah. We have some questions. <gasps> if you want to we... send us questions, uh you can email us at checkpointchatpodcast at gmail.com. You can message us on all the social platforms at checkpoint chat on Twitter. On Instagram, our DMs are open. Um, on TikTok, you can send us your Instagram. What are the Instagram TikToks called? Uh, reels. reels. Send, send us your real. Instagram Reels <laughs> with your questions. Oh my god! And yeah, we've we've got we've got some questions. We only have, I think it's two on Instagram because I don't see anything on Twitter, Facebook, or email. Oh, if you're ready for this, okay. Okay, so so Instagram, let's go. This is where the spicy Qu- questions come from. Question, question one comes from Chilo ZA. Of course so it think, does. I think last week you got the podium, your F1 predictions. The, the I got, top it, three I were, got it wrong, yeah. No, I think the top three you chose were right, but the podium placements were wrong. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. I was okay. actually thinking about that exact question on Sunday when the most exciting <laughs> race of the season happened. And I was like, Chilo's going to come at me for this. So he just says, it's that time of the week. What are your F1 predictions? <laughs> God, I don't know. <laughs> no uh, pressure. Apparently, it's really hot in Spain, so that seems to really help Red Bull. So I'm going to go for Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas this weekend, just like God it damn. was last week. Just yeah. like that. Just like that. And I'll probably be wrong because I want <laughs> that to be the podium and it never what? ends up being that. So. What happens if you're right, though? What do you win? 
Uh, if I'm right, then Cello has to play Pogo with my friends for five hours. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll we'll see that that happens. Okay. If I lose, um, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. This is my yeah. platform. Get off. Okay. Ready. Okay. Ready. Apple, calm down there. <laughs> <laughs> This is probably the spiciest question we'll have. Okay, so this comes from Jad and Joe says, the would you rather to end all would you rather? Oh, God. Would you rather have a question from Megs or a question from Cello? <gasps> <laughs> so yeah, it's easy for me because Cello recommended I play Pogo Stuck, so you can go to hell. So, <laughs> so only uh, Megs from uh, now on. <laughs> so only Megs from now on. <laughs> J- uh, JK, I love questions from everyone. <laughs> Um, I do Trust. like Chiller's Would You Rather's. They mm. they're really fun. So mm. I mean, you chose Megs and I'm choosing Chello. So we're getting best of both worlds here. It's the best of both. You know what? You, you can't can you can't pick between your children. Just you can't pick between your children. Just keep all the questions coming. You know, yeah, it's, it's simple exactly. As that. Um, and yeah, that, but I do that, agree that Chello should go to hell. So yeah. <laughs> wow, you heard it here first. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's all the oh. questions you have this week. Okay. Wow. Can you believe it? This episode is so much shorter. Could have spent so much more time on news if I'd known we had two questions. <laughs> two whole. <laughs> oh, to be fair, we actually well, hit mean, most of the broad strokes of the questions. Is, like, there's yeah. not much else. Um, yeah. I mean, it's usually, we usually have, uh, very seldom do we have a, a, a sufficient amount of questions. Uh, not sufficient, like a moderate amount of questions. Mm. It's usually like, a tumbleweed desert or like or like so many, many yeah <laughs> it, it's usually it's usually we go oh man we had so few questions last week and then it's like motherfuckers here we go yeah you we go. got 10 There's 10 hundred questions, questions the next episode yeah yeah sure that's it then that, that yeah that's Fantastic. that's the shortest episode we've had in in months at least 35 months. years yeah oh, Jesus. this is what episodes used to be like um mm. so i'm not complaining i'm not complaining no. um it's a good time but yeah, uh, if you want to send us questions next week, if you want to bombard our inboxes at Checkpoint Chat Podcast, gmail.com, at mm-hmm. Checkpoint Chats on all them social platforms. Um, also, go like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Uh, it's linked in the description. Go get mm-hmm. us that custom URL. Uh, we've got oh, a website please. as well, checkpointchat.com, which is, I mean, you can listen to the podcast there. We'll be doing stuff in the future. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, who knows what the future holds yeah exactly who knows what the future holds maybe um, we'll pull a Halo Infinite and delay our game what we're making a game yeah <laughs> watch a space the checkpoint chat pogo with your friends <laughs> kidding we're not making a game <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a web browser version of pogo with your friends and put it on our website I oh, know please don't mm-hmm. you you can make that because I don't know how to make it. and games, you can only so. listen to each new episode if you make 5% progress oh <sighs> Are we gonna have? I'm no pretty listeners. sure our listenership will just dive down. Oh, yeah. just die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but, that, but yeah, that's, that's episode 112. Checkpoint chat. No change. Mm-hmm. Early shappies. Only shappies. Early uh, shappies. Get, early get out of my my checkpoint fruit and veg store. No checkpoint chats. Only podcasts. No podcasts. Only checkpoint chats. Hey, there we go. That's <laughs> that's it. That's what we're looking Bam. for. <laughs> put that on a shirt <laughs> you got anything interesting happening today or are you just enjoying the last two days of your nah, staycation it's a weekend holiday's over it's weekend now i'm gonna i'm gonna sweep just now so mm. excited can't wait uh maybe play some some spider-mans mm. and yeah i, I hope know. you don't we'll find any spider-mans while you're sweeping mm. spider-mans i oh know we're getting to that time of the year where it's summer and spiders mm-hmm. start to reappear the rain oh spiders are coming. Although I must say, touch wood, since the cats have moved in with us, we haven't seen <laughs> spiders. You've seen you've seen we've, remains we've of seen, spider appendages. We've seen but remains not of spiders. spiders. I'm like, yes, yes, good cats. <laughs> well, they they're earning their they're earning their keep. <laughs> it's how they pay their rent, man. Yeah, exactly. They hey, have hey, to. Yeah. I mean, Lupin walks <laughs> over your keyboard every day, but as long as he's fucking as as up the spiders, it's fine. He can stay. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. What What are your plans for the weekend? Um, also just like chilling, some video games, um, video games. Yeah. That's, that's about it. It's good weekend. Good weekend. Yeah. I should probably sweep as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if that happens. (laughs) Yeah. But that, that's episode 112. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening as always for the support. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
we'll be back next week with uh yes would you believe it episode 113 doom doom maybe yeah <laughs> maybe why maybe. it's ominous we might be back we, we might, might not be, back. be back we might be back we might, we might not be. be back maybe next week will be episode 200 <laughs> who knows we don't know what the why future holds why have to be mad it's only a game <laughs> it's only a podcast <laughs> it's only a podcast <laughs> thank you why so much for listening we'll see you next week cool Goodbye. Bye.